Um, thanks everyone for joining this evening for this uh, workshop with Kamut and Trail Magazine and um, we're going to show you how to plan your perfect peak bagging route. Uh, but first of all, who are we? Uh, I'm Elle, I'm the UK Community Manager for Kamut. Um, I grew up in a hill walking, hiking family um, and this was apparently my dad's party trick was to just jump on top of trick points so I'm carrying on the family tradition. <laughs> and that's my email there if anybody wants to take a note of that um, following up. We've also got Rob with us. Hello. So I'm the uh, media relations manager for Kamut in the UK. Um, I'm going to leave the majority of the hosting down to L today and just hopefully be able to help out with some of the questions and whatnot. But yeah, and if there, any questions you do have, just fire into the Q&A. Awesome. And of course, the star of the show, we've got Ollie Reed, the editor of Trail Magazine. Do you want to do, introduce yourself, Ollie? Yeah, so I, I'm Ollie, obviously, um, editor of Trail. So Trail, for those who don't know, um, we're the, the sort of biggest and one of the longest running hill walking magazines in Britain, um, about to turn 30 years old next month. And our magazine is basically all about the mountains and hills of the UK. And, you know, we're not a climbing magazine, very much focused on hiking, adventurous routes, you know, wild camping, scrambling, basically any way you can get to the top of something, the most exciting and adventurous way without ropes is what Trail Magazine is all about. So um, we, we've teamed up with Kamut this year on something called the Trail 100, which is something we're incredibly um, sort of excited and passionate about. And a very, very brief, I'll very, very briefly tell you what that is. It's... Um, we, we decided to create our own bucket list, basically, with inside the UK of what we consider to be the 100 best hills and mountains that everybody should walk. So if you're into walking, if you're into mountain walking in Britain, um, then basically this is, these are the hills you need to get up. So it's, it, you know, there's, there's lots of similar lists like the Wainwrights and the Munros, but they're usually very location specific, whereas this covers everywhere. So you'd like to think that everyone who's joining this um, webinar will have something relatively close to them that hopefully you'll be able to go away and climb after we've after we finish talking tonight. Awesome. Cool. Um, and so for anybody who hasn't heard about Kamut before, uh, we are a team of about 70 people um, developing, uh, working on um, the world's biggest outdoor app. So we're a big outdoor family. Everybody who works behind the scenes like loves the outdoors as much as everyone else. So appreciates how important like accurate elevation data and trail information is. Um, and we are changing the way that people explore. Um, so we're a mobile app and um, also accessible via a web browser. Um, and there's loads of things trying to um, provide inspiration for you. But also the thing at the heart of Kamut is the route planner. So all of our routing is sports specific. So whether you're hiking, mountaineering, or going for a bike ride or a trail run, um, our sports specific algorithms will recommend the best way for you based on the um, surface information. You can navigate using your phone. Uh, it'll give you voice, turn by turn navigation. Um, and there's also the ability to save maps offline. Um, and you can also tell your story and be a local expert. Um, so you can share amazing little hidden places that you might find. It might be a beautiful place to brew up a cup of tea, <laughs> watch the sunrise, um, or like a little wild swimming spot. Um, so this is like a little preview of what it looks like in the mobile. Um, so you can see um, like where you're going. The, you get like a little uh, description of like how severe, like how difficult your tour is. Um, you get an elevation profile. You can see where you're going on the map. You also get a breakdown of the trail surfaces and then also this um, navigation while you're while you're navigating in the app. And so I'm going to show you the trail magazine profile. And um, this is an awesome place to go for loads of routes. And of course, you can see we've got here the Trail 100, the ultimate mountain bucket list. So if I go to the collections here in the profile. I can see that we've got a bunch of collections from regional routes to also just the peaks. So maybe if we look at this one, Ollie, the 100 for England. Uh, yeah, go into it. Yeah, I mean, what, what we decided to do, I, myself and Rob worked on this quite a lot last year. There's, there's one collection there that's got everything in it. And then we decided to just, just the simplicity for people who wanted to browse locally to break them down region by region. So, it's, I mean, they, they, they cover all of the main hill walking areas, obviously. These are, these are hill and mountain routes. So very very focused on key key areas so the lake district you can see very heavily populated there 
there's a few in the Dales, one or two in um, in the Peak District. You've got a couple in Yorkshire over there. And then I think we, there may be something as far down as Dartmoor, if you go all the way down. Yeah, the there is one at the bottom. Uh, I think possibly, yes, Tour in Dartmoor. Yeah, there you go. So there's quite a good spread. Um, and then, of course, if we were into Wales as well, you'd see Brecon Beacons and um, all the way up through North Wales as well. So, yes, plenty to choose from. A lifetime's worth of mountains to climb, basically. Awesome. And then what I thought we'd do is we'd plan a route together to one of these peaks. Um, so, Ollie, don't give it, don't give it away. I've, what I've done is I've um, put together some pictures and I was going to get people in the audience to see if they could guess where we were and where we were going to go. So here's one of Ollie's photos teasing so that's, us. That's quite it. early on in this route, um, heading towards quite a, quite a um, renowned and infamous um, ridge line, should we say, somewhere. I, I imagine if m many people you climb this mountain, you will possibly have gone this way and seen this view on you walk up to it. There we go. Trish has got it. Trish has got it straight away. So yes. So that's sort of taking the the, the nice quiet sort of quiet grassy route up from uh, scales. Probably Trish is probably the way that you walked, and it climbs really steeply, and then you sort of amble along this valley, and then all of a sudden Blencathra. You're heading for the summit of Blencathra, which is just out of view to the left on this picture. And what you're looking at there is Sharp Edge, um, an incredibly exciting, quite short, but very, very sharp, the clues in the name, um, Ridge Scramble, which is sort of semi-technical. It's grade one, great, what we class as a grade one scramble, which means you'll be using, you're not going to get along there without using your hands. Um, but yeah, an incredibly, incredibly exciting route. Awesome. And that's what it looks like on a nice day. Yeah, so what you're looking at there is um, you've got, this is a trail magazine's photographer actually tom bailey standing very high with his arms aloft on um what's called the bad step on sharp edge so this is one of the sort of trickiest sections if you see the just below him where the sun's catching the quite flat bit of rock they call that the bad step incredibly smooth bit of rock because so many people have been over it and it's as narrow as it looks probably about as wide as um, as a footpath and you have to sneak along there with big drops away to your right as you come in towards the camera so it's nerve wracking, but it's doable. If you do it on a nice dry day with no low wind, it's, um, it's not much of a problem, but not, not a great place to be in uh, wet ice or incredibly windy conditions, I would, I would describe that as. Ooh, yeah. And the picture on the left there is um, Hallsfell Ridge. That's, uh, that's, that will be our descent route with Blencathra's summit right at the top of the ridge there that you're looking at, just, just catching the shadow. Absolutely lovely. And there we go. That's all. That's, I've just only just realised that's me. That's an action shot of myself. Action there. shot. Yeah, there you go. And that's that's on the sort of upper sections of um, of Sharp Edge. So, looking down below you there is Scales Tarn away to the right, and uh, we're just approaching the sort of steep final section, which is I think it's called Fold Crag. It's a lot of fun. Um, you know, it's very very handsy. You've got it's not not climbing. Probably about this sort of steepness. Loads of good holds. Just a lot of fun, basically, of about ten minutes worth of straight scrambling to the top. Wonderful place to be. Yeah, nice. Cool. Yeah, so of course, Blencathra. So I thought we'd show people how we would actually plan a route up to the top. So back into the trail profile and come out. Here it is. Cool. So I'm just going to go to take me there. And then it's going to open up in the planner with the summit as the destination. Awesome. So where would you reckon, where would we start off from? Is this a, a leave a car in a pub car park, Dobby? Yeah, well, it's, it's one of the reasons why it's such a great mountain. Um, there's, it's really easy to get to. So a lot, a lot of people come into the Lake District on the A66, um, big sort of dual carriageway road that comes in from Penrith, runs all the way to Keswick. And it, um, amazingly for such a big, grand, spectacular mountain, um, A66 runs right along the base of it. So it's got a few laybys there and scales, which you can see just to the right of the mountain there, just on the road. Is a, there's a pub there, um, which is from White Horse Inn, I think. There's a couple of parking bays here and, and you can get in them and they're free to park. You have to get there early. That would be my uh, my one bit of advice. It's a very very popular mountain, and so if you if you want to park in one of these um, these prime spots, 
make sure you get an early start. But yeah, you can if you park there, then you can walk. You can walk straight from there, and one of the paths that you can see on the map there. Cool. So I'll show you a, a cool little Kamut trick. So Kamut's built on top of OpenStreetMap, so as well as all the information on the trails um, and like the elevation, you can also include points of interest from OpenStreetMap. So I can click here into the search bar, and I can add food and drink. There we go. There's the pub. And I can also put parking in and you can play around. There's a bunch of stuff that you might want to um, put on the map to sort of customize it to your own style of, of walking. So I'll start there in the car park. And so then what Kamut's done is it's planned for us the most efficient route from the car park up to Blencathra, but we might go, like you were saying, Ollie, via this ridge. Yeah, so I mean, what you're looking at there, and the reason why Kamut will have planned that route, and it, and it is a lovely way up, um, that is called, let me just remind myself, that, that, that way, there's, there's lots of different ways of Blencastle, that's why it's such a good mountain. Um, that's called Scales Fell. So there's about five or six ridges that all lead straight to one up there that you can see point B's on. And um, Scales Fell is a lovely walk, um, a lovely sort of rolling grassy ridge that meanders its way up on a really, really solid footpath. And it gives you great views across the sharp edge. So if, if, you're not, if you're not a big fan of scrambling, and a lot of people aren't, because, you know, it can be quite nerve-wracking, if, particularly if you're not a fan of exposure and heights, that is a really, really nice way to the top of this peak. Um, however, you know, because of the pictures we showed you, and because I love going the other way, we're, we're going to talk about how you actually sneak up towards Scales Fell, sorry, Scales Tarn, and then uh, take, the, take the rocky arete, basically, up sharp edge. So okay. I think I was going to show you how to do that now. Yeah, so there's a bunch of different ways that you can customize the route in Kamut. Um, so you can just pick up the planning line and drag it. So I can drag it up to this path up here. And then Sharp Edge is actually one of our highlights. So these are the, high, the community highlights. These are little places that people have shared and put little tips in. So obviously, as Tom said, brilliant grade one scramble with the famous bad step that you talked about. There we go. So a few people have recommended it and they've also added their pictures so you can get a really nice idea of the views um, and also the conditions. I'm going to include that on the route. And there we go. There we go. Yeah, and you can see from this, from the way that the routes, that the line goes there. So but pretty much where point two is, I think, is, is the top of the ridge. That's kind of where you top out. And then you've got this lovely, lovely walk that just, um, just comes around the top of the, uh, of, I don't know what you sort of a, around the uh, western edge of the town and you can see right the way down all the way where you've just come and it's a sort of really nice slow plateau up to the summit of Blencathra and you've got amazing views up there all the way north you can see up into the southern uplands of Scotland and then sort of away to the west and to the south you've pretty much got the whole of the uh, of the northern and central lake district so it was a fantastic place to be on a clear day. Oh, wow that is amazing and I might just take this as a moment to like uh, just recap uh, the Kamut Key so you can see here, we've got a bunch of different um, paths indicated. We've got the solid black lines and also these dashed lines. Um, if you click on the question mark in the bottom right hand corner when you're in the, um, the web planner, you've got here, you've got all the route planner basics um, if you want to refresh yourself, but also here we've got the map key. So we can see here that the solid lines are paths, uh, so walking and hiking trails. And then these dashed lines are the mountain hiking paths. So these are the, um, the slightly more technical, again, like a bit of a scramble, maybe, um, according to the uh, graded or according to the Swiss Alpine Club hiking scale. Um, so that's quite useful to remember. And then there's also a few things you can do. Um, you can change the map layers here. So at the moment, we're in the Kamut map. Um, but we can also, for example, change into Google Satellite. So if I wanted to have a look, a closer look at this part of the route here along Sharp Edge, just to get an idea, a bird's eye view of what it looks like, I can zoom right in. And I can also press and hold letter M on my keyboard to make the planning line disappear. And I can get a really nice bird's eye view of that edge. Which is also quite good. I like doing this a lot if you're 
Um, again, growing up in Wales, you end up walking across a lot of very boggy fields. <laughs> it's a good way of eyeing up uh, what the ground conditions might be like and uh, whether you need your wellies. <laughs> Awesome. And then you can also scroll through. Actually, what I like doing is overlaying on the elevation, um, the way types and the surfaces. So actually then being able to see, you know, we've got that bit of mountain hiking path, alpine, that grade one scramble, and then it carries on going up a little bit. And you can also hover through and you can see what the max incline is. We've got 27, 33%. So yeah, definitely deserving a biscuit at the top. And then which way are we going to come back down, Ollie? Well, you've got almost too much to choose from, really, coming off Glen Cathris. So uh, it's tough because you can't really visualise this mountain quite as well from looking at it from above. But if, as, as you look down from where we are there, um, from the summit, you'll see there's about, six, there's about five ridges, I think, coming off the front of Glen Cathris. So there's, there's multiple ways to go down. The easiest way off the top is, um, is a way to the west, which is Bleasfell, and it's the... Um, it's the line that leads away sort of diagonally diagonally left there, sort of um, southwest. However, it's going to leave you a very long way from your car, so it's not, not probably the smartest move because you then you're going to have to walk all the way back along the southern edge of the mountain. Um, the most interesting way down, for sure, is Hallsfell Ridge, which is pretty much, uh, as you can see there, directly south from, um, from where you're going to be standing. So uh, really interesting thing about the top of Blencathra, I know you're talking about trig points at the start, El. There is no trig point on top of Blencathra. It's really, really weird. Instead, there is a. There used to be one, but there's just a, there's a flat disc there instead that's been installed by the OS, and I don't think anybody really knows why. And then even more weird, somebody stole it about five years ago. Somebody went all the way to the top of that mountain and stole the uh, the flat trig. The flat wow. So it got reinstalled about uh, two years ago, or maybe even last year, by a, by a group of volunteers. So it's it's a really, really cool place. It's always busy up there. You trail runners, kids, hikers, campers. I've camped up on top of there before and it's an amazing place to be because it's a really big flat sort of grassy saddle on top of that mountain. So anyway, that's just me rambling just because of how much I love it. But um, yeah, we're, we're going to come down Hallsfell Ridge. So Hallsfell is fantastic. Um, it's it, it might look slightly intimidating from where you are up at the summit because it drops away quite steeply straight below your feet and it is rocky, but it's nowhere near as rocky as what you've just come up. It's nothing like Sharp Edge at all. So um, that's the good news. And it, it's, it's, people call it a grade one scramble. You can avoid the crest of the ridge all the way on Hallsfell. That's the nice thing. There's kind of bypass paths away to the side. So you can hop across rocks on your way down there and, you know, feel like Indiana Jones on your way down it. Or you can just take the nice easy route and meander your way down. And probably after about 15 minutes, the rock gives way to very steep grass. And then you just drop sort of slowly, um, quite sharply down towards the base of the, the um, base of the mountain. And then it's a sort of, you hot foot it um, on a nice really nice path through fields and sheep and all sorts of things back to your car so it's a it's a really really good circuit and it means you never tread the same path twice basically from the second you leave your car so it's a as good as it gets really as a lake district mountain route nice so i'm gonna set this as my new end point so it's a bit more nerve wracking coming down a scramble than it is going up one. Yeah, and that's why, that's why I'm quite keen to point that out. If anybody does want to go away and do this, it's not really a scramble, Hallsfell. I mean, you need to be careful where you put your feet, for sure. Um, you're not going to go racing down there. It's not, it's not a, a classic footpath, like a pitched path, but it's, um, it's very walkable, basically. Yeah, nice. Cool. And then I'm going to start bringing our route back down. So the little um, highlight segment of the ridge finishes here. So I'm just going to start extending our end point so we can back down to join the path and then is this the one that you were saying the path that sort of skirts the bottom along the base of the mountain but yeah dead straightforward i think it's mostly flat it can be a little bit boggy as everything can in Congo. but um <laughs> yeah the, what mostly you've got to worry about is is sheep i think along there I mean, it's a busy mountain, Blancathra, that's for sure. You know, unless you go there on a on very early or sort of late in the evening, particularly in the in spring, summer, you, you're going to see a lot of people up there. But for good reason, you know, it's it's one of the it's probably one of the three most popular peaks up in the lakes, alongside Scarfell Pike and Helvellyn. But um, but that's because it's so good, so it's worth it. Yeah, you're definitely selling it to me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change it. We've currently got a, a one-way route. And I'm going to change it from a one-way route to a round trip. 
and that will just autocomplete us back to the car. And there we go. So then we can see at the moment I've got our fitness level set to in good shape. I'm guessing possibly Ollie, when you're uh, back on your feet after your broken leg, you might be. Uh... Never, there's no double leg break option. <laughs> <laughs> This is just really good for all this will do is change how long uh, Camus estimates it'll take you to do this uh, to do this loop. Um, it's quite good for estimating how much time you're going to be out there um, and then using that to work out how much uh, food and water you might want to take with you and um, when you let people know when to expect you home for dinner. Um, and then yeah we can see this breakdown of the way types and also the surfaces. So we can see we have got a little bit of alpine in here, which is awesome. Cool, and I can zoom to view all by pressing this button here. Not too bad. So I'm going to save this tour. And then what it does for us is it's given it a nice uh, automatically generated name. Got it. Awesome. And then from here on, I can invite a friend. So I can invite Rob in the app and he'll get a little notification to say, um, Eleanor Jay's invited you to join this tour. Or if I'm communicating with a bunch of friends via WhatsApp, I can actually just generate a link. Um, that makes my tour public. Um, and here's a link that I can copy and paste into an email or a WhatsApp message. Everything is um, private automatically. So um, you can work on a route before you sort of publish it um, and make it available to people on your profile. Um, if you do use um, any GPS devices like a Garmin or even like a smartwatch, you can export the GPS GPX file here um, and that'll give you a little download that you can drag and drop. You can also share it uh, via a link or maybe an embed if you've got um, a blog, which is really nice. And then there's also really handily, there's this option to replan the tour. So you can either replan something and change the starting point. So possibly if I was looking at some of the routes on the trail profile and sort of thought that, oh, this one looks really great, but I need to change the, the starting point for where I can get to more easily um, or I can open the whole thing in the planner so this is quite good if you're trying to make like a uh, like a long and a short version of a route um, or like a <laughs> weather on a dry weather version of a route <laughs> and what's great about this replan feature is you have your original uh, route in red underneath um, and then the active route in blue so I could for example I could if I wanted to cut out the um, Maybe I'm taking my mum with me and I want to uh, cut out that really tricky scramble. I can do that and then I can see quite easily what I've changed in my route. And then when I save this, it'll be like a save as function and you'll have both versions, um, which is quite useful. And then I can say without. <laughs> And I can easily remember both. And again, this is private uh, by default. Cool. Don't forget to chuck any questions that you have in the Q and A. Anyone has any burning questions? You're clearly doing a great job of explaining it all out. <laughs> <laughs> And if anyone's got any questions about the Trail 100 or about hiking in the UK in general, uh, I see Giuseppe's coming from between Switzerland and Milan. I'm afraid I don't know that area quite so well. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm not too bad with my UK mountains. Yeah, some great routes in here. So maybe if we went to uh, 
Yeah, I think the Trail 100 is an interesting one for, for anyone on here. So, I mean, it's, it's why we, we've it's, it's existed for quite a long time um, within Trail. It, was, it first appeared in the magazine in 2007 and we've um, it kind of bundled along and we decided to to refresh it again this year, which is why we teamed up with Kamut was we thought, you know, to, to bring in a digital roots partner to do something like we're doing right now it kind of brings it to life so much. And I think for us, it just kind of hit home just how, how great Britain is and the UK is, sorry, I should say, um, because one of the peaks is um, Sleeve Donard, which is the highest mountain in Northern Ireland as well. And it's just the, the, the sort of variety of terrain that we have here and, you know, all the way from, I think, Rosebury Topping is on there, which is a small peak in North Yorkshire. Yes, Tor in Dartmoor is quite high, 600 plus metres, but it's grassy and really simple to walk all the way up to the amazing, amazing mountains of the Scottish Islands and the Scottish Highlands, which, you know, a lot of people don't go to, just don't realise that they're, that they're in the UK, basically. But they're all here in this collection. And, um, you know, if anyone has any questions about them now, great. If not, then please just sort of cycle through everything and have a look. And, and like Elle's just shown you, the, the maps and the terrain and the different, um, and the different terrain types will, will bring everything to life. And there's loads of images in there too. So all very cool. Oh, so someone's asking, how does Kamut determine the surface type of the paths and how accurate is it? Um, so you can see here on all of our maps, um, the map data comes from OpenStreetMap. So if anybody hasn't used or hasn't come across OpenStreetMap before, it's basically like the Wikipedia of maps. It's all open source and there will be community members of OpenStreetMap all over the world actively contributing to routes. Um, so for example, like I went mountain biking a couple of weeks ago down a trail that has obviously eroded quite badly over a wet winter and has got much more severe. And I can just log into OpenStreetMap, find that trail and update it. So the, the sort of the accuracy of the trail is gonna be um, as accurate and as up to date as the community members who are adding to it. Um, and it's also, um, I'll show you how you can, if you're in the planner, um, if you come across something that's, so say for example, a, um, a route that has become overgrown and is not possible anymore, or it's eroded or you know, something has happened, you can actually report this. There's this little exclamation mark in the bottom right hand corner. And so you can click on the map. Um, and you can also do this while you're out navigating on your phone. Um, so I can just zoom in and I can pop a pin where my problem is. Um, and then I can say maybe the route's not passable or it's unsuitable or it's too steep. Um, or maybe I'm having trouble getting Kamut to go down this way and for some reason it's ignoring it. So here, there's a question for you as well, um, Ollie. Ronnie has asked why the Trail 100 has changed because he's now gone back. I know, I've three. seen it. I've seen it. Well, <laughs> it, it, was, it was a hot topic. This, so we decided, as, as ever, everybody always thinks they know they know better, don't they? And so uh, there's only, I think, one of the original trail team still working there from 2007, which I believe is when we did the first list. And we looked at it and we thought, not so much that we wanted to take mountains off it because all the ones on there were very deserving of being there. There was just a bunch that we couldn't believe we'd missed off the first time. Crib Gok, for example, um, in Snowdonia, you know, very, very popular, um, exciting way to the, uh, peak on, on route to the top of Snowdon. Uh, off the top of my head, Sleok up in the Northwest Highlands, which is just one of the, you know, the greatest mountains in Britain, if not Europe, weirdly wasn't on the list. So we decided to make a couple of changes. And then, of course, once we all put it open to the panel of however many of us there are at the magazine, it all got a bit heated. And by the time we'd finished, we ended up chopping and changing 12 picks on the list. So um, we knew it would be slightly controversial and a few people weren't that happy about it for the exact reason you've mentioned. But like I keep saying to people, I suppose the plus side is it just means you've got three more great mountains to climb. So um, and yours can now be the trail 112, Ronnie, if you like. And you, can keep, you can keep the original 12 that we uh, that we that we kicked off. <laughs> yeah, we didn't take the decision lightly. That's what I would say. But I, I think it's now. I like to think it's now a more rounded and a spectacular list than it was before. But um, it's all completely open to debate. Obviously, <laughs> sounds more heated than that bit in the X Factor. You know, when they get all the final people together and they're like, right, who's going to go through? 
it took two days. It was like the X Factor. Wow. We went, we went all the way up to, we went to the lakes. And uh, funnily enough, we, we walked this exact route that we're talking here as a team. And then we stayed, we stayed overnight up in the cottage in the lakes. And we argued about it for two days. And then, um, and then we, <laughs> we still never decided on it. But we, <laughs> oh, it's too late. Magazine's got a press tomorrow. So we just, we just stuck the 12 new ones in. Wow. And how many of them have you hiked personally? Uh, I think I've done, uh, God, I can't remember. It's something like 60. I haven't, I haven't got through them all. There's a lot. I realized more and more as I, as I went through this list, there's a lot of Scotland I haven't got to. Um, yeah. I've done a lot of the peaks on Sky, all the peaks on Sky, um, a lot of the main ones around the Ben Nevis area, Torridon, and a couple of the ones up in the Northwest Highlands. But Scotland is so big and it's so great. And so, so much of the, of the list is the really tricky and remote stuff is up, is up in Scotland. So that's, that's that my plan this year. What before uh, before lockdown was to get up to Scotland and knock off at least ten more, um, but that looks very unlikely right now due to a b not being able to travel and b not having a lower left leg that works. So I think it <laughs> might be a twenty twenty one plan for me. I think. Oh, you can uh, you can live vicariously. So Nick Hardy asked that question. You can live vicariously through her uh, her Munro's of collection. Course, yeah. yeah. Let's have a look at one of these. What I'll do is I'll show people how they can use, um, how they can adapt a route um, for themselves. So which one of these should we pick? I want to do one of the islands ones. Any preference? Go to, go to Sky. Go to Sky. sky. Um, the one there on to the right of the of the ones on Sky you're looking at, Blavin, is a is a great that's a great mountain. Bizarrely pronounced Blavin, even though it's Blavin. The, yeah, the uh, the beauty of Scottish mountain pronunciations. So. <laughs> This is one of the this is one of the great British mountains, and it's you know quite for people who don't know Sky. Um, you may have heard of the Coolin, the Coolin Mountains on Sky, incredibly famous. The Black Coolin Ridge is is the sort of the holy grail of challenge for mountaineering and hill walking in the UK, and it's uh, this amazing um, chain of twelve, thirteen peaks, all made from this shattered black gabbro rock. That's um, incredibly dangerous, incredibly exciting place to be. Blavin sits just away from that main ridge, but is made of the same rock, and it's it's much easier. Um, easy is probably not the right word. It's less technical, less technical challenge than the other um, sky peaks, but with all the views, and it's right by the sea, and you can walk it from sort of sea to summit as well. It's a incredible place to be. Nice. I love that when you goes right from sea level right to the top. It's just yeah, like yeah, you feel every single meter of it in your legs. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's a huge, big, <laughs> sort of gnarled lump of rock rather than with some of the best things you could imagine in Britain. Oh, wow. I've just got a question here. Someone is wondering how to get to the Trail 100 collection. So I'll just, um, if you click on the uh, little three dots next to your name at any point and go to find friends, and then you can search for Trail Magazine. And then here you've got all of the planned routes. And then the easiest thing to do is to go to the collections here on the left hand side. And collections are a bit like file structures. If you imagine a, a route or a highlight as a, as a document, <laughs> these are your folders. So then yeah, it's super easy. So if we go back to Barbara, so what I'm gonna do here, I could just customize this is it's clearly, um, it's an up and back. I can just save it um, in my profile or I can go to customize it. or will just view it in a bit more detail. This looks stunning. Yeah, I think I think the sort of classic route is a bit of an out and back up to this mountain. I th there's different ways to sort of come off the top, but I think the route I can't quite tell because the map's quite panned out. But you walk in quite a long way from from the east. It's a really long sort of rolling, like I think it's like a jeep track that you follow out there, and then you you can drop down to. Oh, there you go. Yeah, you can walk it a couple of different ways. So. You always start in the same place, come along that trail, and then where it's shown you there, where it cuts up to the summit, you can either go up that way or you could swing around the path that goes below it there and you can, um, you can drop down to Kamasunari Bay, which is just away, I think, to the left, which is just slightly out of shot, which is an amazing, amazing place. With a, there's, a, there's a bothy on there, which, for those of you who don't know, are these incredible shelters up in the Scottish Highlands where you can you can stay for free, basically. Really, really rustic. Um, 
I mean, incredibly rustic, <laughs> especially a bench. <laughs> Sometimes a sink, if you're lucky. Um, and then the, you can see there's a, there's a really great south ridge there coming up the mountain, um, and that's a really nice way up it. Yeah, exactly there where, where the uh, where the coast is going. So there's a couple of really great ways to to the top. Actually, cool. I might I might suggest let's have a go at replanning this. Yeah, um, actually looking at it, I think the way um, the way I described there, yeah, was the way I've done it, and that's um, I think that's probably the most spectacular way you can approach it. Yeah, I'll just um, touch on again what's really cool about the commute routes is that these highlights along the way all pull through to the preview. So as well as the amazing pictures that members of the community have taken, you also get their little tips. Um, so if you haven't got Ollie presenting the route to you, waxing lyrical about what you're going to be able to see from the top, um, you actually have like Kamut's own community of what we call pioneers suggesting to you where you might want to go for a dip on the way back down. For anyone who's never been to the Scottish Islands as well, I, I really, I really can't ever e express enough every time I talk about them that I genuinely think the best place in the world that I've ever been to. I, I just don't understand why more people don't go there. I've been to Sky three or four times, and the first time that I went, I was so annoyed with myself that it had taken me nearly 30 years of my life to get there. That um, It's like this secret that not many people in Britain know about, I always think. And the views yeah. off the top of Glavin and from Southern Sky out towards Rum and um, across Egg and the other islands up there are just it's astonishing. You could travel anywhere in the world and you wouldn't see views like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's hilarious. Nick's just recognised herself in the picture <laughs> swimming. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edit a copy and open it in the planner so we can start to uh, start to play around with this one I can expand the waypoints here so what we're going to do is I'm going to change it it's currently a one-way route so I'm going to start uh, let's get rid of waypoint B what have we got here actually? There's a way point one. Start um, deleting the way back. It's super easy just to uh, customize. Cool. So then we've got the summit now is our end point, B. And so then you reckon coming down this ridge here? Yeah, well, no, actually, I'd, I'd ascend oh. that ridge. So if you if you drop all the way down, you'd actually, I'd actually change the start point thinking about this. Yeah. If you pan out, if you pan out quite a long way, because it might be quite a good example of how, you, of how you fully change a route on this. I think the start point is down you see where it says Don Ringill quite low down there yeah. it's near on the road on the road close to there there's a there's a there's a parking bay and oh. then there's a long there's a long track that leads in ah oh, cool so we'll come up this ridge yeah so you go up that ridge cool so let's and i think i think that's the way that's the way to do it but then you'll you'll end up starting and finishing at the same place because otherwise there's a long long way between them um, between where you'll hit that road and where you'll be parked. Mm -hmm. Road walking at the end of a long day in the mountains is not what you want to do. Oh, it just hurts your feet so much, doesn't it? The... And, it's, and it's not fun. <laughs> or the, the sort of fun's over by that point, and then it just becomes <laughs> incredib incredibly arduous. So there you go. It's down there somewhere. So somewhere, somewhere near the road. I won't know until I see it, but there is a parking bay on the, on the actual main road there. This one? Yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah, so right from there, and you follow Perfect. what is basically a sort of stony Land Rover track all the way along. It sort of slowly rises and falls, and then you want to drop down. So you see where it says New Kamasunari Bay, um, Bothy? Yes. That's the Bothy I was talking That's about. That's the Bothy. So a really cool thing to do is walk all the way to the Bothy. Oh, wow. Check the Bothy out. You could sort of brew up a cup of tea in there or something. Um, I think you'd have to take a stove with you. I don't think they have kettles in there from memory. Yeah. Then from the Bothy, you, you head straight out. So you can kind of dip your toe in the sea. So you can make this a proper sea to summit, um, sea to summit walk and then just go straight up that ridge. And it's, it's incredibly spectacular. Oh, wow. And then what I'd kind of recommend from the summit 
it's it's a little bit it's a little bit necky on top of Blavin. It's one of those places where you you sort of question your uh, your sanity a little bit, but it's not it's not overly overly technical, and you can kind of loop round. I don't know if it's going to show up this track actually, or I might have led you slightly astray here. Mm -hmm. There is a way there is a way down off that ridge that will then loop back round towards the out path. Not off the ridge, maybe off the summit. But it might not be one of the ones that shows up on this map. Or you could or you can just go straight up and down the south ridge and go back the way you came. Where is it roughly? Do you reckon if I look in um south Well I think, I I think you see sorry, I can't I can't actually control what you're doing. Yeah, it kind of it kind of comes dead south from where that sort of kink in the red line is there. Yeah, there. Yeah. Plus, that's quite a plateaued bit of hill there, which if you if you, you pick your way up and you can walk across it, it's quite pathless and wild, mm. but it's um it's perfectly safe. And then that'll link back up with the um link back up with the outward path. Oh, cool. So that's actually quite a good way of. Often you will want to um, go the kind of more rugged and wild route when you're walking. So what we can do is we can pop here as an end point, um, and it will follow around. And maybe we want to. I'll pull it around here and then what we can do is we can start to do a little bit of off-grid planning yeah so, so if, you avoid, reckon... if you avoid anything that's too shadowy and looks like a cliff then <laughs> off the top of my head here because i can't because i because I, I haven't been up there for a couple of years you can you can knit your way through this somewhere yeah definitely and then, um, and then you you will eventually find your way back down to Land Rover track. And it, it's quite grassy and, you know, loads of amazing, as, as ever in Scotland, spectacular wildlife up there. Incredible yeah. birds, white-tailed eagles, golden eagles up here, sort of oh, wow. crawling all over these mountains. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing some off-grid um, route planning. So I'm going to uncheck this little follow ways box and start setting my new endpoint. And you can basically add loads of these so you can just like follow the little path that you can see in the satellite view and then maybe while i do this uh have we got any questions rob <laughs> yeah actually i do have a question from jim jim's asked is the edit function a premium perk um so do you want to explain pricing or do you want me to do it while you're, uh, you're off gridding? Yeah, you, you explain it while I uh, get us back home. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so everything L has demoed um, is available on the sort of free sort of package of Kamut. I guess the only thing that you've shown really so far that would be um, a pay for function would be to export a GPS. So Kamut is free to download, free to use, free to do all the planning. But if you wanted to take um, your route or the map offline, then essentially you can purchase map regions and they're all one-off payments. So you can buy an individual region or right up to buying the full world, which would be $29.99. Then we do have a, like a, a premium subscription service, which is a monthly payment. Um, with that, that comes with some extra features that we're not going to go through in here. Is that right, Al? Uh, no. Well, we can if we have time, but I thought that maybe that was a bit of a scope creep. Yeah, but they would, so they would include, um, there's a weather forecasting, a multi-day planner and a few other sort of extra benefits that come with that. But the majority of everything we go through here is, yeah, it's totally free to use. Um, it's just if you wanted to save it for offline. So if you were going up to the mountains and you were worried about sort of phone signal um, or battery life, then that's when, the sort of, when it becomes an advantage to purchase those maps and map regions for offline use. And so but by doing that, Rob, that offline means you can use this without phone signal anywhere, right? So Yeah, exactly that. You can even pop your phone into um, flight mode, essentially, yeah. and then and and still use it to navigate. That's the, the great key. thing to... Oh, sorry. So what I was going to say is it's a key thing with so many of the mountain regions, particularly in the UK, is that the you just don't get a signal. Um, you tend to get it better in Scotland, I found, a lot of the time than you do in the lakes often, when you're in those, which when you're in the deep valleys and all that sort of stuff, you lose signal. So... Offline function, fantastic. Yeah, 100%. And the, a tip would be to not only you could save the route for offline use, but also um, save the region. Because then if you do want to sort of change your sort of routing and planning on the go, it makes it much easier and guarantees you've got that map ready there to be used. 
There's another question about the satellite maps be coming available on the smartphone app. Um, so currently, I don't know if we have got plans to make Google Satellite available on the phone app. Do you know, Rob? Uh, no, not that I, I haven't seen that it's on any sort of um, roadmaps at the moment, but it's yeah. definitely a good suggestion. So we can put it forward to the sort of product team and see what they say. Yeah, definitely. It's one thing to like, um, we're always taking feedback from the community and like suggesting um, ways to improve your routes and you'll get little product updates in your inbox um, from time to time. Um, I've got, we've got a question here from Anya asking about, um, is there a way to hide your routes and not sync all of them to your GPS device? So I don't, do you mean like hide them from your profile, Anya, or do you just mean just like not sync them? So I think she means not sync. So I've I double checked and she's got a Wahoo. Um, and I think the answer is no. Unfortunately, they will, as soon as you sync, um, all the routes would update onto your onto your Wahoo, as far as I'm aware. But um, yeah, I, I don't know if you know any different now. I'm pretty sure they'll all sync automatically. Um, but if you also want to hide your route. So say you're working on a route and um, you don't want it published on your profile because it's not finished yet. And you don't want anybody pinching it, thinking that's a good idea, <laughs> getting a bit stuck. Um, you can check if your routes are public or private. If they're private, they'll have a little padlock on them. Um, and if you've published them and made them public, then they'll have a little open padlock on them. So it's... Um, quite easy to go and see somebody else's roots if you find them. Um, so here we go. I'll um, go visit Nick and uh, do one of her roots. I'll show you how easy it is. If I could pinch, uh, sorry, not pinch, I could borrow a, <laughs> it's very collaborative, <laughs> um, a route, maybe just like a little river walk. Uh, there we go. Nick's currently working her way through the outlying fells. So I could go and create a copy of this tour. Nick, are you able to um, get out into the lakes properly now from where you are? Or are you still sort of quarantined over on the west? Or have you, are you guys able to sort of roam freely around there now that lockdown started to ease a little bit? So it's un unfair um, me question that you then asked to type. <laughs> I've, um, I've just done, I've, hopefully made it so that she can talk hello can you hear me yes hi. oh hi um yes we started driving a little bit further afield um but yeah we're climbing the wainwright outlying fells um because they're on the edges of the national park so it doesn't tend to be the areas that are the honeypot areas for the lakes so they've been quite quiet in the main is is the region still quite quiet or has it been picking up over the last couple of weeks I've heard from other people who've been uh, in the in the who would kind of live more central lakes that it has certainly picked up over the last couple of weeks. In fact, today I think they've decided to close a road that runs the length of Coniston oh, really? um, because of people parking uh, and emergency vehicles can't get through um, and littering oh, and things like that. So yeah, it's been a bit of a been a bit of a shame a lot of litter picking activity required um it was always gonna happen wasn't it yeah such a shame but yeah so then i've just gone and uh, at the moment they've just got the route i haven't got any highlights but i could go back in to edit and then um, go and include some highlights along this route so have you have you done black coon nick yeah just last week Wonderful place, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That was one of the Trail 100, isn't it? I think it's the only one that's not a Wainwright. So it was the only one of the Lake District fells that's on the Trail 100 list that I'd not done yet. Yeah, I'd, I'd, um, I couldn't really believe it when I first went out there. I was sort of dragged out there against, against my will at one point. <laughs> what, the, what do I want to go all the way out there for? <laughs> this random place out on the West Coast. But we went there. We walked in the evening once. Set off about five o'clock up there and just unreal, unreal views up into the lakes and the Scarfells and everything from there, I thought. Yeah, absolutely. The, the view back to the Scarfells and the yeah. Coniston Fells is just fantastic from there. Nobody goes there either, do they? That's the best thing about it. 
Yeah, exactly. I think we saw two people, maybe three. Um, and that was it. So, yeah, it was great. Is it in the Lake District? It is just in the Lake District. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's just right at the very southwest tip. Definitely making me um, reassess my decision to live in the middle of Bristol. So, <laughs> lockdown malarkey. Well, the beauty of the lakes, I always think, uh, well, you know, even easier for Nick, who lives up there, obviously, but um, if you go up there for a long weekend, there's, there's a lot of stuff you can get done, you know, because everything's so tightly packed together. So you can really pack a lot of um, adventure into a, into a short space of time in the lake district. That's what I love about it so much. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I did um, doing the Munros last year um, up in Scotland and how much driving you have to do between the um, mountainous parts of, the, of Scotland. Uh, Lake District is so compact if you compare it to that. Yeah. I think Nick has one of our biggest collections on Kamut, doesn't she? It might be maybe give a shout out to that collection as well. Yeah, should we find it? I'll show everybody how they can find Nick. And you in and in, in Trail Magazine this month as well, Nick. Yeah, get about a bit, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> have, you your, have you had your copy through? It's the one that came out last week, isn't it? I think. It is, yeah. It's brilliant. The pictures are amazing. Yeah, well, and we've got some cracking um, pictures from that from that Monroe challenge. That's actually Blarven. That first photo there on the cover <laughs> photo is the one that that El just uh, showed us earlier on. Look into oh, the wow. Yeah, right? That looks incredible. All these pictures are so like misleading. They always show the summits on a really nice cloud-free day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's definitely some in there, El, where you can see me looking like a drowned rat. <laughs> <laughs> it's not all that great. <laughs> yeah, I know it was really hard. It wasn't all. <laughs> but we specifically picked the ones that, um, the best weather days, we did the gnarly ridges or the really dramatic looking mountains. We left the kind of grassy uh rounded hills for the uh for the worst weather days yeah it's also just a safety consideration isn't it it's not it's not yeah. just about the awesome pictures but yeah this is one whopper of a collection and how long did you do all of the monroes in nick uh six months six months last summer absolutely bonkers unbelievable yeah, those oh, early ones. That's a pretty. <laughs> that's the exact. Uh, yeah, uh, impression there. I'll um I'll include a link to this um collection in the um in the webinar follow up if anybody wants to check it out. It is absolutely amazing. I'm not sure what was the bigger mammoth task. Actually, walking all of the Munros or putting together the collection <laughs> was the perfect uh, lockdown activity. Um putting together the copy for this, uh, to be honest. Yeah. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just recap um, before everybody starts uh, disappearing, we're coming up to the end of the hour, um, how people can get to the Route Planner tips and tricks. If you click on the little question mark in the bottom right hand corner here, this brings up everything from just picking your start and end point, sorting your waypoints, the key, um, how you can display, for example, train stations, um, car parks and pubs on the map. Um, and also the off grid that I showed you, if you're trying to just trace um, a ridge line using the satellite view and also the keyboard shortcuts. So I showed you briefly M to hide the tour line. There's also a couple of other shortcuts that can speed up your route planning using the web browser. Um, also, if you click on the top three dots next to your profile here, you can access our help guides, which are like somebody described yesterday, the book of the play. <laughs> so you can see, for example, um, how the hiking trail difficulties are um, described and how they're shown on the map. Um, again, using the route planner. And then if there's a more in-depth topic, like a particular GPS device that you've got um, or using offline maps or anything, you can go here, click on support. And this will take you to like the little self-service area. So you can search for 
goes for anything. So it might be navigation. Managing your voice navigation, navigating with the map, anything with your GPS, or for example, how to save your battery life if you're going on an epic, epic walk and you want to use as little battery juice as possible. All quite helpful. Awesome. Any more questions? Just gonna keep looking through the manual routes. <laughs> what are you gonna do, Ollie? First, as soon as your leg is better, what's your well, first think on the list? On this on this list, so the, the one I, I wanted to climb the most um, was I, I don't know how, if I'm even gonna pronounce this right. Foynaven, Foynaven, I think it's called. It's it's the furthest north anyway. Right up in the top of um the top of Scotland. So I was pl I was planning to go up there, I think it was in November. But we got we got bombed by the weather, and it's a, a long way to drive, um, long way to drive not to see any views. So, I, I, that was on my that was on my list for this summer. As was a peak called Ben Gerag, which is just um, really close to Anne Shalak, which is another of the sort of great northwest Scotland mountains. So we were planning to go all the way up. There you go, Foynaver, I think, is the one right at the top there. We were planning to go up there for oh no, Ben Hope, Ben Hope and Foynaver are next to each other, and do. Um, two or three of them over sort of four or five days up there. So that's, that's my plan. Get in the car, do the sort of 10, 12 hour trek, lockdown permitting, hopefully, um, and sort of hope for the best with the weather, do a bit of wild camping and, um, and chalk off as many of these as possible. I mean, like Nick says, there's a hell of a lot of driving to do when you're up in Scotland. And not just that, there's a lot of walking to do from road to mountain, if you know what I mean. You don't just, like you do in sort of Snowdonia and the lakes quite often, get out of the car and start going up you often have to walk about three or four miles just to get to the base or something. So it's a good place to really sort of base yourself for a good, good long while and take a tent with you and take advantage of the Bothies. It's an incredibly adventurous place. So yeah, we'll see. Maybe one day I'll get back up there again. Yeah. <laughs> have you watched the, um, the Bothy film done by this chap called Stephen Pern? I don't think I have, no. Oh, I might send you a link to it. It's brilliant. It's this chap that just decides to walk from his home on the south coast around nearly all of the bothies in the UK, putting wow. in hooks so that people can hang up their kit to dry or you know, hang up their, their bags so that their food isn't on the floor accessible to mice. And it's, it's absolutely brilliant. He just leaves his door and he's like, right, I've got loads of hooks. I'm gonna walk around all the bothies. And it's just, just so just like old fashioned, charming and romantic. It just goes it's off by himself. Hobby, I would describe that as, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> Very unusual hobby. <laughs> Very nice thing to do. <laughs> oh, it's a lovely little film. You've got time on your hands. You've got a broken leg. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Cheers, everyone. Uh, definitely check out the um, the Trail One Hundred routes on Kamut. And um, yeah, if you ta if you do go and um, hike any of them, when you finish your tour, you can tag Trail Magazine in your route. Um, so this is one of my completed bike rides. Um, didn't break my leg in this crash, thankfully. Uh, but it's really easy to tag a participant. And so you can tag Trail Magazine um, just to let us know that you've gone and done one of the routes and like share all of your awesome photos. And maybe you'll find some new highlights out there to add to the map. But yeah, it'd be awesome to yeah, and if anyone's got any questions, any questions they want to hit us with a trail, um, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you can you can find us on there. And we're relatively like rel relatively reliable at replying. So um, yeah, please get in touch if there's anything else you want to know. Awesome. And I have recorded this webinar, so um, if anybody wants to rewatch it um, afterwards, then you're welcome to. Uh, it's awesome. Cool. Well, thanks everybody for your time this evening. Thanks so much, Ollie, for. Um, really okay. inspiring me to get out and I hope I dust sent... off my walking boots. <laughs> <laughs> I could talk forever about this. You just have to tell me when to shut up. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely brilliant. Cheers so much. And um, thanks mm. Rob and thanks Nick for um, being, <laughs> being put on the spot like that. Thank you. Well, oh, cheers guys. Absolute pleasure. Cheers.
Thank you very much.